Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, the good news just keeps coming in. Bitcoin embraced by America's oldest bank, DNY Mellon. So this is great news, but the real news is what they're actually going to be doing with Bitcoin and not just Bitcoin, but cryptocurrencies and digital assets. On top of that, we're going to take a look at uh, just how early we are and take a look at Google Trends. And actually, everything seems to be picking up from Bitcoin to Ethereum to Cardano. And that means good news for everybody. And then two more things we're going to talk about. First of all, there was a great video by uh, Meet Kevin, and it comes down to verbiage that Tesla is using to to actually uh, increase their holdings of Bitcoin. And this video alone, as he breaks it down, is making me rethink my exit strategy for Bitcoin alone. And finally, there was a pretty great message that I received from Mike, and he asked me what I would do if I had twenty to thirty thousand dollars right now to invest in this bull run. So I'll tell you exactly what that is. But first, let's take a look what's going on in the market. And let's see, today is uh, uh, February 11th, uh, 11 o'clock AM, El Paso, Texas time, another beautiful day, uh, about 70 degrees, so not too bad. Sorry if you're in a part of the country where it's cold, but uh, today, not too shabby, we will take it. So here's what we got going on right now. Let me throw this up real quick so everybody can see what the heck is going on. So just go over this real quick. Looks like we've got uh, Bitcoin holding pretty strong at 47,000. And uh, I woke up today, it was a $48,000 and everybody thought it was gonna go to a 50 potentially, but that's a lot of that's a lot of ground to make up. But uh, hey, maybe by the weekend, who knows? Ethereum almost at 1800, but staying strong around 1786. Tether and Cardano had flipped today. I don't know if you had realized this or had seen this. I actually posted this on my Twitter account and uh, Cardano's making major moves. There's a lot of different things that are going on. Uh, they just entered into the uh, Gogan area for, for Gogan era for smart contract, which is good. Uh, they also have signed uh, major contracts or major dealings with uh, Sub-Saharan African countries, and that's great. Also, Grayscale uh, has picked them up for their trusts, uh, to put them on their trusts. So, Cardano is making big moves, and also they've been, uh, and we talked about this all this yesterday, uh, about staking over at Binance at 22%. It's not as great as it sounds. You can only do up to 1,000. Maybe they have increased that to 5,000, I'm not for sure. So a lot of different places are picking up Cardano. Uh, don't sleep on it because uh, it could be, hey, it could be fighting for that number two spot. Uh, XRP still holding strong at 6%, Polkadot 9, anything really great. Stellar up uh, 15%. I think there's uh, some, some more news for uh, different stable coins that are being added onto that. So, you know, hey, uh, that's always great. You know what's really great is when USDC goes directly onto uh, the Stellar uh, network, because uh, right now USDC is an ERC20 token, and it's expensive to move around. Everything's expensive for ERC20 as far as uh, Ethereum. And that's why I'm super excited about that ERC20 converter that Cardano came out with. And uh, you're gonna be able to be able to move things over from Ethereum to Cardano. And that, my friends, is a game changer. And it's why I have invested heavily into Cardano. It's also why we have, uh, we now have two different stake pools for DNews. Uh, so if you're looking for something like that, just go to, uh, actually it's uh, up here. Uh, when I go, it's uh, danteachescrypto.com. Cardano staking pool, and there's a nice little uh, intro video which you can watch. Very simple to do. And let's see what else we got. 25% for Cosmos, also on news of the Binance staking, so good for them. 60% for IOTA. Uh, just so you know, I'm going to be having the uh, founders of IOTA on the channel pretty soon because they're making some pretty big moves. And I want to talk to them about what's going on. Let well, everybody know when that happens, and uh, we will go from there. Also, let's see, sentiment analysis. What's going to go up in the next hour? <laughs> All I really care about. Here we go. Avalanche. So huh. Avalanche is one of those projects that I just missed. I mean, it's just, look, as time goes on, I'm going to miss some opportunities and Avalanche, I think, was one of them. I think you can still get in. It's pretty early and it looks like a pretty good project. What else we got? Mainframe, storage, bit shares. Hmm, bit shares. Dash. Qcoin. Huh. You know, Qcoin, they're doing a lot of different things with uh, being able to transfer over uh, from ERC-20 tokens as well, as far as like uh, reducing those those costs. I'm going to take a bigger look at KuCoin later on. Anyhow, that's what's going on in the market. Let's just jump into today's top stories. So let me go up here. This is interesting because, you know, on this channel, I always like to talk about moving the needle. And every little thing that we see and do that is being done in the mainstream just moves the needle for cryptocurrency digital assets. Oh, also before we move on, just want you to note that uh, we've upgraded the mic. 
I'm just using these, these headphones for that, but I've actually increased the gain, so hopefully it'll be a little bit louder. We'll see how this all works out, and we'll tweak it until we get the audio correct. Also, we moved over from 720p to 1080, so we'll see how that works out as far as uploads and compression, all that good stuff. So uh, those are what's going on, on the channel. Let's see what's going on in the mainstream. So BNY Mellon, I, whoever this is, sure. The Bank of New York Mellon Corp, the oldest banking institution in the U.S., is opening its doors to Bitcoin, according to a February 11 report by the Wall Street Journal. Journal. So this is always great news. When we have something like that is huge like this, so where we have something like, you know, we have like the old companies getting into it, like the mass mutuals that are coming in and going, you know what? We think that uh, this is going to be a pretty big deal. So we have something like BNY Mellon comes along and says, hey, we've been around for uh, a millennia almost. I mean, we've been around for a long time. We are going to start accepting Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. I think, again, it just moves a needle and it goes to show you because it's not about us. I mean, we're already here. We already know where this is all going, but it's about getting everybody else involved into just the, the regular population. We are early adopters. If we have something like this, it kind of brings people into the fold and then they start to figure out about cryptocurrencies digital assets. They start to invest in them. Prices go up. Everybody's happy. So this is good news. I never thought that an older institution would really come along. I thought these guys would just get blockbustered, honestly. I thought they would just watch everything just kind of move by. But uh, again, looks like I could be wrong yet again. Anyhow, so the bank will be able to hold and transfer the world's largest crypto as well as other digital assets later in 2021. It already has a team of exec executives actually do that. So they've, they've, they've actually, it's not like we're going to do this. They're actually putting things in play. They actually have people in place to say, do, you know, make sure that this all goes off without a hitch when we open this up in 2021. And actually, this was, to me, I, at first I would think to myself, like, well, who cares? Because I can get, I can get crypto anywhere. You know, I can get crypto on uh, Voyager, one because I can, because I signed up. Hopefully they fixed that. I have no idea about the announcement. I have no idea about uh, uh, how they're um, fixing the uh, uh, waiting list. I know it's very tedious for everybody, but uh, hopefully it all gets resolved. But I'll have Steve on, the CEO, again, so he can figure it out what the heck's going on. But uh, I can get you know crypto uh, on uh, Gemini. I can get on Kraken. I can get it on Coinbase if I really want to. And uh, I can get anywhere. So why would it do what I care about if a bank, you know, op opens this opportunity up? Because I'm not definitely not going to use them. That's for sure. Again, it's my mistake in, in thinking about just myself because you have to you have to imagine there's people out there that hear these stories about people who get hacked and they lose all their cryptocurrency. Like I don't want to do that. And there's a story about uh, the guy who has all the crypto on his computer and uh, he's just sitting there looking at it every day. It's got hundreds of millions of dollars in Bitcoin. And he can't open it up because he can't remember the password. And he's only got 10 tries. And he's already used eight. So for me, if like, you know what? I don't know what cryptocurrency assets are. I have no idea what they do. And it looks like people are losing them. And if they're not FDIC insured, I don't want to do it. And I think that is a stumbling block. So for us, we, we don't have to deal with, we don't worry about that because we, we know about the nano ledgers. We know about the paper wallets. We know about protecting ourselves and the scams and things like that. However, on the other side, there's people that don't have that opportunity. I mean, they have the opportunity. They just don't have either the willpower or the time to do it. Think about it this way. If you are a single mom, four kids, two jobs, do you really think you're going to do all these types of things to get out of that, uh, that situation? Or do you say, you know what? I'm used to a bank. If the bank's going to do it and things are going up, sure, I'll get into it. That's the whole thing that there is a different situation for everybody. And I think this is uh, good for inclusion. That's just me. Let me know what you think in the comment section. This is just how I see it. I think it's good. Anyhow, uh, Roman Regelman, Regelman, the bank's CEO says this, digital assets are becoming part of the mainstream. And it's true. I mean, they're, they're everywhere. They're not everywhere. If you watch MSNBC, CNBC, and I guarantee you are getting a ton of calls from your friends who you may have not heard of for a long time going, hey, what's up with this Bitcoin? Hey, what about Ethereum? Hey, what about Doge? So uh, if that's you, you know that the herd is coming. And on top of that, I just took a look real quick today at Google Trends because Google Trends doesn't give you the amount of, of, of traffic and actual search results. But what, what it does give you, it gives you on a continuum between zero and 100. And it says on these dates, so like this one, 
I'll just go like this, like Bitcoin, the highest searches it, had, it has ever been ever was December, 2017. It's because you know there was a huge bull run and people didn't really know too much about it. Now people kind of know about Bitcoin, but even take a look at this. People know about Bitcoin and they know what it is and they kind of know about decentralization. You can ask anybody, people are like, yeah, I've heard of it. But still, even in January, it was at a 50. So it was half of the amount that was happening over here, but it's still a big, uh, a big time number. So people are actively searching it for it. Now let's take a look at Ethereum. Ethereum had a pretty big peak back in December 2017, like everything else. But look at the actual searches now. Right now is the most that people have ever searched for Ethereum. And I think it will only continue because of these crazy price predictions that are out there. People are talking about 30,000, 40,000 Ethereum in this cycle. And uh, I mean, sure, I, I have a, a prediction of 10,000. Hope I'm wrong. Hope it does go to 40,000, but who knows? But uh, I don't want us to get, get ahead of ourselves. This isn't just a bunch of hopium and, and sensationalism. Uh, I mean, if I'm wrong, so much. But if I'm right at 10,000, I'm super happy right there. So, and this, this just goes to show you that there's being people searching for it. Cardano, same type of thing. This is at 100. This is the most that's ever been searched for on Google Trends. And cryptocurrency, again, 2017, that's a lot. But it's still being searched for half as much, which is still a ton as compared to the whole time frame of 2004, which is as far back as it goes, all the way to today. So looking at all these things, the question always becomes, am I too late? Did I miss the boat? Is there something that I should have done? Well, you didn't miss anything right now. And if, and if you've been taking a look at these, uh, have these uh, four-year charts, which I always talk about, let me just bring those up real quick. So yeah, so it's always like this. It's always the halving, which happened in 2012. You get an all-time high, a massive dip after that in 2014, then the reset. Then they happened in 2016. Halving, 2017, all-time high, big massive dip, then a reset. And then the same thing's happening again here over in 2020. But in 2021, I believe we're going to hit some, well, we've already hit a ton of all-time highs. So there, there's no um, disputing that fact. So this, I think, is, is a pretty big play. So the question is then, well, did I miss anything? But you have to understand, this is the first part of this massive parabolic bull run. So you haven't missed anything. I mean, it'd be great if, you know, beforehand you could actually invest in dollar cost average, which, you know, like I've been doing that for four years. But if you're just here now, congratulations, you made it. I mean, it's better late than never. I think this is a pretty great time. This is the second greatest time to actually be in the cryptocurrency. The first greatest time was when it sucked and there was nothing going on, it was moving sideways. So uh, however way you look at it, I think it's a pretty good time. And I did a couple of exit strategies and I've, I've, changed, it, I've changed it slightly uh, from you know, going from, from stair step to this one thing I call an 80-20 rule. I will link that video at the very end, but basically it says I'm gonna be cashing out 80% uh, of my positions and holding 20% of all my cryptocurrency, except for Bitcoin. And Bitcoin, I did a 50-50. But I think what I'm going to do now is, and I'm going to take a, take a real hard look at this, but I'm going to continue on with my 80-20 rule, except I think I'm going to actually keep 80% of my Bitcoin and 20% and, uh, uh, I will be selling. And I'm going to tell you why. Because there was this great video. It was sent to me by a subscriber. And this is me, Kevin. If you don't watch me, Kevin, he's a pretty entertaining guy. He does a lot with uh, real estate, which I like to uh, watch him for, but he's been getting into cryptocurrency more and more, like a lot of people have. And he did this pretty fantastic video a couple of days ago. It was called Tesla's Deeper Bitcoin Secret, but no one's talking about. And there's this word right here. Let me blow this up. And this is a very important word. Indefinite lived intangible assets. And what he talks about with this one is he says that because of this, the way that is all structured and the way that, of course, Tesla is a corporation, they are not like retail investors like you or I, they are privy to some pretty great advantages as far as with taxes. And one of these things is that if they bought 1.5 billion, and you can watch the video, I'll link at the very end. If, if they bought 1.5 billion, which they did, and the price goes down or the value of Bitcoin goes down to 1.2 billion, they're able to take that 300,000 or that 300, excuse me, 300,000. What am I talking about? 300 million. And they're able to deduct that 
from their taxes right away without having to sell like me and you would without having to go through any extra steps, just going, yeah, we lost 300 million and then off it goes. And what Kevin talks about here is that the last quarter, their revenue was like 386 million. So really it would show, really what it would show is only a profit of 86 million because they have this uh, indefinite intangible asset that they have written off. Here's the thing, they still have it on their spreadsheets. They still haven't sold it, have anything else. So he says what it's gonna look like to the average investor is that uh, you know, Tesla had only 86 million uh, in profit when in, actual, in actuality they could have tons more. And uh, he says, this is what's gonna happen. He says, great news because the average investor will look at that and go, and even Wall Street will be like, oh, well, they lost a bunch of money. And what does it happen? Then they sell off their stocks. What happens when people sell off their stocks? Only smart money knows why that actually happened. So now you and I know these things that if the price of Bitcoin goes down, if you invest in Tesla like me, this was a great opportunity. If the, if the, the cost of Bitcoin goes down, the shares of the stock of Tesla will go down because people will start selling it off. That means it's an even greater opportunity to buy Tesla. And all you gotta do is just sit around and wait because Bitcoin, of course, it is volatile. And that's okay, we want volatility because what's gonna happen? It goes down, just like we talked about those four-year cycles, <laughs> right back up. And what happens when it goes right back up? Well, Bitcoin, the price of Bitcoin goes up. That's good for Tesla. That's good for me and you. Also, the price of the, te of the Tesla stock that you just bought down here because everybody else didn't, couldn't figure it out has also gone up there. That's great news. And then he goes into some other different things about uh, uh, the actual profits and how they sell it. And it's, it's a pretty good video. So when I was looking at this, I was thinking to myself, you know, if other corporations are looking at it, just like what they are right now because of the MicroStrategy Conference, if they can say to themselves, hmm, so you're telling me that we can take this, this Bitcoin and we can put it on our balance sheet, we can put it in our treasury, It'll help us hedge our bets against this crazy money that's fluctuating. And also we can use it for tax deferred purposes and really help us out with the stocks. And it really doesn't matter what we do. We can actually you know, make profits. Either way we do it, all you do is hold on to it. That sounds pretty good. So to me, it was like a light bulb just went off and I'm like, well, shoot, if that's the way that all the different corporations are, are gonna look at it, I mean, which is what we're seeing right now. And I don't know how many are actually buying it behind the scenes, but I can tell you we almost hit 50,000 just today. That MicroStrategy uh, conference was just, what, seven days ago? Elon Musk just bought it, what, two or three days ago? And now here we are and we're almost at 50,000. Not financial advice, but uh, I think for myself, I think uh, I'm gonna have to uh, flip that 80-20 rule. And uh, what, it went from 80-20, selling 80, and then uh, holding on to 20. The 50-50 for Bitcoin only. I'm not talking about altcoins. Altcoins are a whole different thing. No, not a lot of companies are holding on to Doge. <laughs> I'm not not to make fun of Doge, but it's it's that's what it's there for. It's a it's a meme. So not too many are holding on to Doge. They're holding on to Bitcoin. Altcoins are totally different. That still stays the same video 20. But for Bitcoin, it's a special circumstance. And I think this video alone could prove that. So I will link that uh, at the very end. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on to our last piece. So last up, this was just a, a quick message I got and I thought I'd just share with everybody. Uh, this is from Mike. It says, thanks. I learned a lot this last month. Uh, not looking for financial advice because I'm not a financial advisor, of course. He says, uh, hypothetically, if 41-year-old Rob, first of all, Rob is much older than 41. Uh, don't let the smooth, the, the smooth taste fool you. I'm actually super old. Uh, Rob and his wife had 20 or 30,000 to invest in this bull run. Where would he put it in to maximize it? I was thinking Rob might go heavy in Voyager and Cardano and then some Bitcoin. Thanks, Michael. And I said, you know what? That's a pretty good question as far as like what I would do. Now, old Rob would just say dollar cost average all the way in. You know, just put 25 bucks a week, $50 a week, and then that would be it. But after talking to my friend Diddy, who went in in all super heavy in 2017, uh, I thought that's not a bad idea. And I was talking to uh, some other people and they did the same thing and it worked out pretty well for them. Some it didn't work out, but most it did. But then I thought, you know what? I just can't get away from just being a little bit more cautious. So I said, you know what I would do? Instead of dollar cost average, I would value cost average. And I would do, what I would do is I would take that $20,000, me personally, not what I'm telling you to do, me, me. And I'll break it up into four lump payments. And I would just say, okay, here's 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000. I would put it into certain cryptocurrencies on day zero or day one. 
Then two weeks later, I put another 5,000 into that same amount. Two weeks later, two weeks later, two weeks later. Well, actually uh, into uh, just four payments. Because that way, like even if I did that, even if you look back in 2017, if I did that, if I would have done some value cost averaging and went in on uh, the first of, let's say, I'll say the first of December, did something like that. Then I hit December 15th, then all the way at the top, and then I could buy it all the way at the bottom or something like that. Or maybe I can say like this, let's do six payments out. That'd be even better actually. Then I could actually make some pretty good choices. Again, I think right now is the perfect opportunity. I would do four payments because it's not like we're gonna do this in a month and then go straight down. I think we've got the whole rest of 2021 to do this. So if I did something like that, I'd say, you know what? I would go Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Polkadot, Theta, and Voyager. That's what I would do. I think those are the ones that'll get the safest gains. And also you can pair that with the most explosive growth. Voyager being my, my top one, uh, maybe next to Polkadot and Theta. And he goes, okay, thanks. And alts would be considered higher risk and Bitcoin ETH lower risk, correct? Yes. So even though people would, they, they talked to me and like, well, why would you put in a Bitcoin? Because Bitcoin for your prediction could only go up to 150,000. So right now it's at 50, that's only a 3X. Yes, but you know what? It is the safest bet. And that prediction that I put for 150,000 is on, I think that is the most conservative prediction that is out there right now. I think maybe the most, the most conservative is probably from JP Morgan at 100,000. So yeah, but uh, I would say like this, uh, again, uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum are probably like the two safest plays right now, not only because of what, they're, what they can do and, and the network effect and how many people are doing it, but as far as like um, the legalities of it, because Bitcoin has, I'm not gonna say pretty much, but it's pretty safe as far as being called a security. Ethereum kind of gets a pass because of the uh, decentralization. And I'm not here to debate any of that part, but I think in the past, the US government has pretty much given those two a pass and that's uh, what I would do. Celsius would be another one because it is a registered security right now with the US government, so you could do that. But again, Theta, I think it's gonna be big because everybody is watching videos, uh, working from home via Zoom. You're watching me, esports are enormous. So uh, I think that's another, another great play. Polkadot. Polkadot, Cardano, and Ethereum, they're all gonna be right there. And in the next two to three years, they're just gonna explode massively. So uh, put it where you want to, but those are the ones that I would do and that is what uh, uh, I would go for. All right, so that is it for today. A little bit longer, I apologize. There's a lot of, a lot of great information and uh, it's a pretty great day. And the last thing I will say is, I know you look at all these prices and they're going up to the moon. You're like, man, I wish I would've bought more. I wish I would've bought more. Even I do that and I, I bought a ton over the last four years. But uh, you just have to remember one thing, you bought what you could, when you could, so just be happy with what you got and just sit back and take the W. All you gotta do right now is just not do something crazy and sell everything. Just sit back and go, hey, I'm making money. All right, so if you liked that video and you made it all the way in, congratulations. Why don't you hit the thumbs up? That'd really help out the channel, I appreciate it. Also consider subscribing because everything's pretty much time sensitive anyhow. And that is all for today. I'll link those two videos, uh, meet Kevin and uh, the other one we talked about on the left and right. And that is all, and I'll see you on the next one.